you basically give us the numbers currently that you've been getting as far as your sales and distribution and all that stuff, and then you would write a business plan of how I'm, could you I'm make- I'm buying nuts. Anybody selling macadamia <laughs> nuts right now, dollar pound. But exactly, could you write a business plan that would boost your profits 10%? Uh, can you do Why one should thing? I put my secret on the road, Bell? Get five out of competitor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I, I put them there, yeah. and I get five out of competitors telling me on this. Tell you don't Hawaiian. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiian. It's not only Hawaiians now. Hawaiians, they're all right. Mm -hmm. But I got five out of competitors out there. But if, so you, if you were to say do a side project of your current business, which was to um, do chocolate-covered macadamia, or something where you're taking your raw product and doing an added value. Could you take the macadamia nuts and that are like off grade, chipped or whatever, could you turn those into chocolate macadamia nuts yeah. and have a market? Okay, let me, let me, uh, 43 years ago, we went back and it was hard to put the nuts on the market. Mm -hmm. That's 43 years ago when we, my dad and I we looked at it was five cents a pound purchase from a go. And he asked me and I said, We cannot make it. It's out of the picture. So I went around Hilo, Maui and all the places. I gathered up all the people who had five acres and less or more or ten acres. We form a co op. And this is what we did. We form a co-op. When we went in and talked for sales and everything, we talked in volume, and then that's when everybody perked up. So the co-op is still going. That's how we operate. But that's a how the market is. A co-op like is certainly a business idea for anybody in the room. If you wanted, as your business plan, was to start up a co-op, um, that's certainly a valuable business that I would yeah. We, st we started with about 45 people, and then when you went in, before you go in and you talk about 500 pounds, 300 pounds, everybody, <coughs> but when you go in, you talk about 2,000 pounds, everybody, oh, exactly. you know? So that's the whole thing. So but now the, the whole operation is starting to go to the, the group, my, my nephew, They'll, they'll get me into that process, okay. I pout talk already. He pout talk. Yeah. Done, this, I'm done. This, this pan is getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Chris, and uh, totally confused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, be, uh, honestly, you, when we took, because I didn't get information on the big picture of this whole, uh, series of uh, workshops and seminars. So uh, <clears throat> the first class, the, the first, the farm, the, yeah, so I thought, wow, you know, we, we got over this, you know, to me it was hard to do, you know, your first class, so, and, uh, and I mean, you know, I was growing up in the farm too, you know, not as, I don't love farming or, and you know, we'll just work or play with my cousins, you know, during the summer time, which is uh, you know, part of seeing all the cycles of whatever uh, my uncle and my grandfather went through. You know, he, go, he had a fire, he went through everything. And you know, I didn't find that very uh, interesting or you know, something that I look forward to do. But from the last class, learning all these natural uh, farming techniques and, and stuff is really interesting. So, you know, as, as far as the agriculture aspect, I, you know, yeah, I, it's like, I, you know, I'm already trying to do all these different uh, techniques uh, and having, making mistakes all the way to today with that IMO thing and everything, but that's how you learn. <laughs> but, but, you know, then I, I wanted to take this, uh, you know, additional, I, which I thought was an additional class, you know, just to learn uh, a little bit about business uh, planning and, and such, you know, the formal um, things. And I think this is, you know, part of the criteria of, of getting money to, you know, get a loan or whatever to pursue almost anything. 
not only ag. So that's kind of, I thought we was finished with the, <coughs> the, uh, the grant uh, certification or whatever, <laughs> and this was just, you know, something to, something else to learn, but now knowing that it's part of it, you know, it now, you know, it makes it even more uh, maybe uh, complex or, you know, no, you gotta, this is definitely gonna be harder, you know, assignments and whatnot. And I'm sure it will be for everybody because they, you know, everybody's working in it and stuff like that, so. But uh, <coughs> for me, uh, as far as an ag opportunity, uh, what I would try to uh, concentrate on would be more like an you know, unorthodox thing, like uh, Fakarolo, you know, because <laughs> I'm just looking at, you know, I mean, it's inevitable, it's gonna, the market is gonna, it's just a matter we'll of time. Open. We'll be dead by then, but, you know, the but you gotta be, you know, <laughs> one of the things on business is you gotta be ready to accept be one of the first guys to put your foot in the door for a new thing. And the market is gonna be there, no matter what. Okay, you just gotta probably, whatever they uh, require as a standard, you know, for, for to um, be as part of the dispensary, or however they figure it out. If you have your, 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 uh, your um, process in place you, that will be certified, you know, you'll be that much ahead, maybe, and, and you know, and I, want to make money, you know, I mean, so, you know, I don't do things as, uh, for pleasure as far as work, to make <laughs> money. Because everything ends up, uh, when I start something that is a hobby and I get real serious and I want to make money out of it and then uh, it becomes like a job. Um, the other plant, or as far as acting, would be the kava. And uh, I know people have been doing it, but I realizing that the worldwide market on that is really uh, become the awareness of that and a lot of, lot of worldwide everybody uh, seems to have an interest in it for not as much cultural reasons but um, because of the, the effects and, and, the, uh, and the, the peacefulness that they get uh, from using it. So I, I already know a couple of people that have patents out uh, of doing uh, different things with it, uh, like making extracts in, in a healthy way where, uh, you know, th you don't have to do all this uh, ritual things or, you know, humbug to do all that, <laughs> rinsing them out and straining them and, and, and stuff. So, and I realize that, uh, what you call it, it's, I don't know if it's gonna be a good crop to really grow and make money because it, you know, from what I understand, it's, it's, it takes a, lot, a while to uh, get the roots, you know, uh, to that primary potential uh, where they're most, you know, five years or so for brown tea. And, you know, you're just literally digging it out of the ground and you gotta put on other batches, so you gotta rotate it and all this stuff, so, and there's so many varieties and, and stuff, but that, that, that's another possible thing that, you know, me look at. Otherwise, for me, is in the agriculture aspect of my future, as well as my sons, is we just, you know, gonna just roll off of that <laughs> and continue doing the Mac nut thing, you know. So, but I'm sure we can utilize all this information. I don't like the idea of making loans and stuff, owing money, because I've been through that my whole life and trying to do everything on the, you know, on my own, but but no matter what the business plan thing is, I'm interested in you know for for the whole the whole aspect of, of everything, you know, as far as business and um, agriculture. I think Kama is a, a fantastic market. Yeah. I think it's a great market, great international market. Hi, I'm Shane, my dad, my uncle. Family. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about um, cropping and doing a lot of stuff. We went to IMO class with Dr. Park. Oh, nice. Yeah, we did his thing. I was thinking, wow, you know, he can. He's the one only doing IMO on a big scale. He's making money doing that, you know, ask all these machines. Kind of 
expensive machine, but you know, I was like, oh, I am all to ladybugs, how to import ladybugs, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that, you know, nobody get ladybugs. Um, we get plenty land, not just, uh, you know, Hawaiian <laughs> homes, we get from Honaka, from my parent, my mom's side. Um, we go in the store and I was thinking, you know what, we can sell in there and whatnot and get so much things, you know, it's like, oh, you know, and I was talking to the guy that helped Dr. <laughs> Park, and he was saying, what's his name? John. Um, no, yeah, his right hand man, uh, you know. Going, he said, just start small. Whatever you do, just start small. Get them down, you know, degrees, whatever. I was like, oh, okay. <coughs> and then uh, I was like, oh, you know, this is what we've been doing. I, all you see all on our tables right now, IMOs. We see <laughs> I am always, we get vinegar, we get brown rice, we get yeah. eggshells, and now we get. A lot get, of stuff going on the train, too. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we missed the. We did. We went. Uh, the critical period of the. By I am all, and we implant, well, we implant spinach and all of this stuff, and the things, and it's like, oh, we don't, you know, we don't really grow, and the things just didn't go, and um, so I was thinking, you know, God, all of that kind of stuff. And then the other day, I pick up um, papaya, $10, um, $10, and they fill up my whole truck. Papaya is all green, nice papayas. And then I was going off, and I forgot my key, but my next-door neighbor, she had um, her gate open, and I was following her. I was like, hey, excuse me, can I go around your way? She was like, yeah. I was like, you like papaya? She's like, oh, you got so much. And she's from France. Or something, but that she was traveling. I don't know if it was Japan or Korea. She's like, you know how much is one of these? I was like, ten dollars. She's like, fifty dollars. I was like, you crazy? I'm going to <laughs> try and get the papayas. Ten dollars. I was like, you serious? But I don't know. I never even researched if you can get on green. Yeah, they just it. opened the market last year. Um, there's about three distributors that are doing it right Only now. three. Um, they are all certified organic. Pesticides or anything like that, no GMO. So these are guys that are growing non GMO papaya in Hawaii. So there's a major potential mm -hmm. for product loss. I mean, the, the virus will get them. It does, yeah. But they are making their money while they can. So does it have to you be? You have a five year plan, knowing that by the time you're done with your five years, that all your plants will be dead with dead. disease, but somehow you can make a million dollars between here and next. What's the problem? Oh, so, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It gotta be non-GMO for it to, be non to go over there. I was, cause she was saying fifty dollars. I was looking at the back of my truck. I was ten dollars. I was like, I'm gonna be in a semi rig. I'd be like, okay, yeah, you know. So. I mean, honestly, one of the best business plans I've seen in my time doing this was doing papaya distributions in Japan. Uh, the amount, the amount of uh, on the on the finished finances. See, that was the latest oh, one I had. Good Lord, how much money could possibly be? Crazy. I know. It's what I just, this was just what, yes, yesterday. This was just yesterday. I was like, no way. But you got to remember, there's a lot of travel involved. You're going to Japan literally like every month and making sure things are in line because uh, competitors will come in and undercut you and all this. You need to have that relationship with your customers. So when you do your business plan and you talk about the marketing side, that's probably one of the most important sections would be describing travel your, your, your customers, who they are, and why they think that you're special. So if you can sell that back to them when they talk to a competitor, be like, oh, but we had this relationship, or we do this for each other, mm -hmm. and then you can actually build that relationship. Oh, okay. Just know that people are trying to get in that market so hardcore right now, but only three companies have made it in, and uh, it's because they have the highest quality papayas that Japan is looking for. So if you can meet that market, and you can meet the, 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 the product, I just was thinking of that. I just yesterday I was like fifty dollars. I was like, I was looking the truck. I was like, you know, I get about three thousand right here. You know, like, <laughs> but yeah, that was you know a lot of thinking of that. Now, 
It's about fifty, fourteen hundred dollars for a ton. Mm -hmm. Before it was two hundred fifty bucks dollars for a ton. So we throw it left. So we gotta get some people to put the trees back. So the IMO is the price if you could get IMO is way, way less. You know, everybody's buying what I So if you learn how to make Everybody. My name is uh, April Hoxson. Um, I'm like one out of nine children, and uh, there's seven living. Mom's mom's like uh, really sickly, and uh, we have a five-acre lot in Paneva. And so she's saying that you know all our lives we wanted to like try and plant stuff. We had things on the farm once upon a time, but um, now that we're older, she's you know you guys are gonna get the land, so you guys need to be educated and figure out what you guys gonna do. So we're like, I, I dipped into all uh, my brother guys are into piggery and we wanna plant, but it's, she's all, always saying, oh, it's Akubukai, you gotta, you gotta have a plan, you gotta have a plan. And so she signs me up to James class. I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? What am I getting into? And so um, halfway through, I was like, hey, you know, this is not so bad, you know? And then I got, I got like really into it and it kinda like, like Auntie was saying, it really brought in my horizon. It, it really changed my aspects. I mean, my major, I totally changed it from one thing to egg. And so, you know, it's, I mean, you have, we have the land, so why not get it educated and use that, benefit from classes like this, and, you know, profit. I mean, there's so much things going on right now. It's, it's amazing in this class. Can't keep up. It's like <laughs> so much ideas. It's crazy. I come home, my girls are like, I don't want to plant. I don't want to become a farmer. I'm leaving. I'm going to the mainland. And it's because there's so much, I'm just dropping them on all these tunes. But um, profit, I mean, I have like two ideas right now, one of which I will share, <laughs> which is probably going to be an um, um, inoculated deep litter system, piggery, definitely a piggery. Uh, we have, I mean, the idea is there. Um, there's, I have money saved up for it, and it's you know it's clean. How can we not go wrong on that? And then the second thing I think I'm gonna do is like a nursery, but that's like a hidden thing agenda with myself. So um, I definitely look forward to trying to do a business proposal and um, trying to gain the knowledge to to get money to extend eventually. So I look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Or trying to. There's so much money to be made with that yeah. system. My name is uh, Nolan Along. I have a two and a half acre farm, and that's on East Palai Street. And uh, I started off with five acres, but I, I gave somebody my two and a half acres in the farm so that he can also produce crops and whatever he wants to do. So he has a piggery and he's planting bananas and so forth. Frankly, I don't know what I'm, I'm doing in this class. <laughs> uh, he said that last time. Yes. <laughs> I gotta say that again. The, the reason why I'm saying that is because I actually came, came to the uh, first uh, training courses uh, because uh, I thought maybe there wasn't going to be enough young people attending these classes. So actually, the classes were really good for these people to come in and learn how to do agriculture as a business. And uh, I must tell you that uh, for me, uh, with my age, I'm 86 years old, and uh, that's why I'm saying I don't know why I'm here. Uh, the idea is that I, I I've been in the commercial business and agriculture business for a long, long time, since I retired from uh, Parks and Recreation in, in, on Oahu. I used to be a landscape contractor that, that for about 10 years. And then when I came here, uh, it was a retirement by taking my Hawaiian homelands of five acres. And uh, 
So I, I've been very successful being in the orchid business. Uh, I was an orchid farmer, and then when the uh, the orchids went out because of the the uh, sprays that we used for herbicide uh, orchids, because I had my orchids under instead of under a covered greenhouse, I had it under a uh, shade house, and that's not the that thing to do in Hilo because you get uh, a lot of rain. So when we had I think one year about 247 inches of rain, and that's when we use a lot of the benlate. And the benlate uh, that came from this uh, uh, company was tainted. So it, it killed uh, all the crops, not only mine, but a lot of orchid growers, they uh, went through all, all of that. But I was very successful in uh, selling orchids. I saw it, it was commercial. So what did it teach me? It taught me to diversify. Because if I were, you know, growing orchids by itself, when you go down, you don't have a business to keep out, right? So then what I did, I, I went to a, a University of Hawaii and to learn uh, how to do <coughs> tissue, tissue culture, okay? So I had a lab, tissue culture, and I was in a commercial business, very su successful in that. And, uh, and the other businesses I, I was in also developing uh, a nursery, a selling plants. I was a vendor for Walmart for a number of years, say 1995 to, to about uh, 2000, uh, 2009. Okay. But with my age, of course, I, I'm slowing down and retired from all, all of that stuff. Okay, I also sold uh, Chinese catfish. commercially. Also raised escargot. In other words, apple snails, the golden apple snails, which you, you really don't have here, but you have to import it from other islands, like I got mine from Maui. But now you can't even get it bec because they won't allow you to ship it, uh, you know, anyway to go to other islands, okay? So I was in that business. And the, these are, there was many businesses that I was doing together. I also raised uh, catfish, okay? And then uh, I already said I, I was at, uh, in tissue culture. I was a vendor in uh, selling uh, uh, landscape plants and uh, fruit trees to uh, Walmart for a number of years. And all of that, uh, I then went into uh, hydroponic vegetables which I still do, but I, I'm just dabbling in that. I'm sort of retired, uh, you know, I'm slowing down. In, in other words, uh, uh, what I've been doing is to uh, put down in writing all the processes of different things that I've done, and, and I teach people uh, some of these things, because where I'm going, <laughs> you, didn't, you don't need all this stuff, <laughs> so you gotta share it with uh, uh, So that's why, I, I, I'm so glad to see young people come in here and, and learning how to do ag agriculture. Now, if I can use some ideas, I can help you because some of the processes was like raising Chinese catfish, doing hydroponics of our vegetables. I've uh, written all the processes down. So I, I do help people, you know, uh, uh, with, with uh, getting, uh, uh, getting to know how to do these things. Because uh, as I said, where I'm going, I, I don't need all those things up there, okay? And then, and then, uh, so what, what am I doing in this class? I, I really don't know. So if, I, if you don't see me anymore, and if I fade away, I, that's because uh, I, I would say that if I had a, a, a few more years to live, this is what I would like to do. And uh, this is my crop. I wanna do medicinal herbs, the kind of herbs that you use in cooking, yeah, like basil, different, uh, you know, herbs that I have researched that are medicinal that you can use because I see in my my church that all my members are, members in my church, they have all kinds of ailments. I do too, okay? they diabetic, they get, uh, you know, they need their blood cleanse, they, they need all kinds of things. So if I were, if I had, uh, you know, more time to go into this uh, crop, that's what I want to do, do medicinal herbs in, in a, a greenhouse setting on benches and do that. Because an old guy like me, I don't want to be doing it in the ground <laughs> and bending over. 
This way, if you do it on a bench, you don't have to be bending down. And you, you don't have to be killing your soil or, or, or doing that. And everything will be uh, water automatically in, in, a, in, in a greenhouse setting. So uh, not only watering automatically, but also uh, uh, do, doing the fertilizing uh, with the system so you don't waste water and then everything is, is go going into your pots. And uh, that's what I would like to do. If, if I w were going to go to this, I don't want to get any loans because I, I did that already. <laughs> and uh, I, I kind of, so, you know, when you get a plan like this, so you're going to come out with a financial plan where you, you want to go to the bank. And uh, I've, done, I've done that. I haven't gone to the bank, but I use my credit cards, you know, to <laughs> even buy, a, you know, a tractor to maintain my place. But, uh, I, I don't... I don't want to uh, do loans because it takes years and years for you to pay back the, the monies. So wha what I wish to do if I uh, continue to do uh, agriculture, I, I just want to do the herbs to help people. Uh, just like uh, uh, our teacher, our instructor has said that uh, uh, I'm not doing it for profit. I want to help people, you know, with, uh, you know, helping their, uh, uh, their health, for them to be helpful by, you know, eating herbs, and uh, you can uh, do it by tea, and you can do it all kinds of ways, but I've researched the herbs, and that's what I would like to do, is, is do that, and uh, help help my fellow men, fellow people, fellow friends, and whatever, uh, to do that, to, so they can be uh, healthy. And uh, that's what I would uh, wanna do if I were to continue on. Thank you. Thank you. The two old fucks. <laughs> 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 hey, um, I'm Lisa. Um, I really don't have a plan right now. Um, I thought I had a plan with vegetables. But then when we took the first class and we went to all these field trips, every week my mind changed. So I thought of the piggery thing, but I don't have pigs. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta steal from the neighbor. Um, I'm trying vegetables right now. See if I can grow anything. So far, only eggplant and cabbage are successful. Uh, yeah, I really don't have any plans. <laughs> <laughs> but you're that thinking, was and every week it's a new, it's a new well, plan. Yeah, it was, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking. I need to think about it. Thank you. So this is my husband's idea more than it is mine, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm supporting him in what he wants to do. No, you can write your own business plan. Right. Um, <laughs> we're looking at doing uh, like a tree farm and looking what kinds of trees would be uh, marketable here in Hawaii for whatever kinds of projects that people like to do. So whatever we're. What do you mean? Uh, for wood. Oh, wood. Wood. Okay. So you're gonna go into timber. Yes. Okay. So looking at maybe like koa and bamboo. Something that's fast growing, something that's re reusable and mm -hmm. renewable. Mm -hmm. So that is a market I know nothing about, and I'm looking forward to some market data from you. <laughs> 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 I just don't know much about timber. Could you slide the mic down there? Just leave it on me. There's there's some nice.